global economy sits on tectonic plates, with modern society built on their outer crust. This year, the Earth has shifted, creating seismic waves in some industries and pending tsunamis in others. How do you position yourself to ride the wave of change, to catch it versus being a helpless onlooker? We are going to take you on a geobusiness expedition to examine three big waves forming offshore. One of the first waves forming is the redistribution from commercial to residential real estate. Commercial real estate has been dealt its biggest blow in recent memory and will likely not return to pre-COVID levels. And as commercial real estate implodes, tides are rising in residential real estate. Until March, San Francisco has been among the most sought after square footage for companies. But since COVID, vacant office space has gone from its lowest ever vacancy rate to its highest, doubling in less than a year. Think about that, the lowest vacancy rate to the highest in the same year. It's as if we're in the midst of a pandemic. Anyways, in the five stages of grief, many commercial real estate holders are still stuck in denial. Jeff Blau, CEO of Related Properties, one of the world's largest commercial landlords, is attempting to pull at the heartstrings of tenants, saying, I feel like it's a little bit of company's civic duty to return to the office. This is reminiscent of university chancellors wrapping themselves in the flag and saying we had a national responsibility to welcome students back to campus. No, no, Mr. Blau, you have a responsibility to your shareholders to face the music, and university chancellors have a responsibility to cauterize the pandemic. Anyway, anyway, Twitter, Facebook, Slack, and Coinbase have all announced the move to near 100% remote workforce, providing cover for other companies to do the same. Earlier this year, Pinterest paid $90 million to terminate their San Francisco lease. To put that into some context, Pinterest has roughly 88 million U.S. users. So to terminate the lease of their U.S. headquarters, they spent almost $1 for every user in the United States. Here at Prop G, we like to find unique sources of data that provide insight. That previous data did neither. That indicates one thing. The move to remote is real. We are talking about demand destruction that is structural, not cyclical. And this trend goes beyond West Coast tech. Let's look at New York, the nation's largest commercial real estate market. New York's size and the diversity of its business tend to signal market trends. And the coronavirus pandemic is hitting the city hard on several fronts. 7,700 retail stores totaling 115 million square feet are expected to close in New York City this year. At the same time, 173 million square feet of office space is expected to come online, but only 59% of that has been leased, far below the pre-COVID average of 74%. At my online education firm, Section 4, we paid, no joke, $1 million early to terminate our lease, and our approach to office space and work is being reshaped permanently. This isn't cyclical, it's structural. In short, New York City real estate is in trouble, and there isn't a life jacket to keep the industry afloat. The commercial real estate industry's rule of thumb in the 1980s was 200 to 300 square feet per employee. By 2019, the average had fallen to 127 feet. Adding insult to injury, even more commercial real estate demand will dry up as fintech's coming of age reduces the need for physical banks, your doctor's office becomes your iPhone, and you find lunch in your own refrigerator and autonomous vehicles reduce the need for garage space. The lightning strike that torches the economy is always unexpected, but commercial real estate might be that strike. One savior, possibly, flexible office space. I was, to put it mildly, a WeWork bear, but I'm actually quite bullish on the underlying concept in a post-COVID world. Google trend data suggests a growing demand for flexible spaces where people can get out of their house to work for parts of the week. Co-working search volumes have rebounded, but are outpaced by searches for simply renting office space as people opt for private or shared spaces. So who wins here? Who could catch and ride the tsunami? One player is poised to own a large slice of the pie. Some clues. This firm already has 7 million listings in 220 countries. Global brand equity and likely every young executive or nearly every young executive already has an account on this platform. Prediction, Airbnb will repurpose commercial real estate. They'll offer flexible office space to enterprise clients, possibly as a rundle, recurring revenue bundle, 
that takes them from a $50 billion valuation after an IPO we all will agree was underpriced after the close of its first day of trading to a $100 billion valuation. They have a global brand consumers trust, a technology platform that could scale to offer private office spaces and commercial buildings on a part-time basis. They have a demand, a demand base that is global and opportunities and credibility to get supply in every major urban work center in the world. Commercial real estate's demise shouldn't be a surprise. The future always had different plans for commercial property. COVID just brought the future forward. Peter Drucker predicted office buildings would be like the pyramids. We'd marvel at them, but they'd serve no practical purpose. By the way, the Kardashians must be Egyptian as their daddy became a mummy. Uh, I don't care what anyone says. I like the old Bruce Jenner from the 1976 Montreal Olympics. Anyways, many of the commercial space closures will be in malls, which were struggling long before the pandemic, pushed department stores, including JCPenney's and Brooks Brothers, into bankruptcy. But the final blow is coming from the work from home revolution. We've had nine years of change happen in two months at the onset of COVID. Pre-COVID, the average person spent 90,000 hours at their workplace over a lifetime. That's over a decade in a cubicle. As Peter Gibbons said, human beings were not meant to sit in little cubicles staring at computer screens all day. As we've learned from Trump's tax returns, real estate has been a ridiculously tax advantaged sector. Real estate is the third largest source of wealth for the ultra rich, accounting for 9% of Forbes billionaires last year. With more people working at home, expect those billionaires to follow the money as spending gets reallocated to their homes and office setups, a trend that is already happening. The winners here, Home Depot, Restoration Hardware, Best Buy, Wayfair, Williams-Sonoma, and Home Builders. Other winners, the sunny states. One in three workers said they would move to a new city or state if remote work continued indefinitely. These high-income earners are trading city living for sun, space, and lower taxes in places like Florida. I winter in Florida, I summer in New York City, and fall in... Bars. I fall in bars. In July and August, home sales in Miami Beach reached $980 million, more than double the $433 million spent in the same period in 2019. With the activity concentrated at the priciest homes, the average sale price jumped 78% to $1.8 million in August, up from $996,000 last year. But there's been a great migration towards sunnier pastures in the South and West for a decade. Again, we're just pulling the future forward. Of the top 15 fastest growing U.S. cities in the past decade, 10 are Southern. Texas has added almost 1 million new residents. Prediction, I think we're going blue on Tuesday. I hate to say it out loud, y'all, but anyways, landslide, we're calling it that night. You heard it here. And its income tax rate, as you guessed it, Texas that is, zero. With more people working at home, Spending on home supplies has been up approximately 50% every week since April versus the year prior. And with the wave moving toward residential real estate, lumber prices have skyrocketed threefold, from $300 per thousand board feet to a high of $948 in September. A thousand board feet is a term I have never used, nor will I ever use it again. And as framing lumber makes up about a fifth of the material cost of a typical home, the shortage has added over $16,000 to the price of an average new single family home since April. But the first wave in a tsunami is not necessarily the largest. Right now, we can see the towering first waves coming crashing down, but behind them, behind them are bigger monsters. Tune in next week when we talk about education. We'll see you next week.